Hello and welcome. Hi, I'm Dave. Today we're going to look at two big reasons why I avoid using inner HTML when creating dynamic content with JavaScript. Let's get started. You can see I've got an HTML file here and it's a very basic HTML file. And why I wanted to show this is because we're going to create dynamic content. So adding to this with JavaScript and you can see I've just got a main element here and a section with two buttons. So I just wanted to show that we don't have anything extra in the HTML file. In the main JS file now, I've got an init app function and I've got an add event listener added to the document. And when the DOM content loaded event is called, we call the init app function to kick off the app, which is essentially what you would do to kick off a vanilla JavaScript app. And I've got two buttons that we have found that we showed there in the HTML, and I've added event listeners to both of those. And they both call separate functions, create paras one and create paras two, because we're going to be creating paragraphs. So let's look at this first create paras one function. What it does is it grabs the current time, and that's because we're going to measure the duration that this function takes. And then it grabs the main element that we had in the HTML file, and then it starts a while loop and it loops 500 times and we set the inner HTML every time and we're setting another paragraph element. So we'll have 500 paragraphs and this is to demonstrate how slow inner HTML really is. And that is because inner HTML has to reparse and recreate all the DOM nodes inside the parent element every time you set it. So let's take a look at the uh, inner HTML result now in the browser, and you can see our two buttons here. I'm going to click inner HTML and we'll see the duration that it takes to create those 500 paragraphs. So I've clicked the inner HTML button and let's see what we get over here. There's the 500 paragraphs and the duration, 733 milliseconds. That took a while. So now let's go ahead and look at the other function that I've got, which is the optimal way to do it. And this again was only 500. Now let's look at create paras two. We have the same definition here to measure the duration where we get the start time and then calculate the duration at the end. But inside the function, there's a little more going on. We're once again grabbing the main element, but then we're creating a document fragment. And if you're familiar with React, this is a similar concept. It's not the exact same thing that's going on. It's not the virtual DOM, but a document fragment is a kind of a lightweight part of the document, but it's not really attached to the document. So you can attach things to it. And then when you're ready to update the actual DOM, you can use that fragment and append it. And then that fragment is empty and everything inside the fragment is added to the DOM, but not some element like a div that would be added otherwise. This is just a fragment that does not get added to the DOM, but everything inside of it does. Now look, I'm also looping 10,000 times instead of 500, so a lot more. And what we do is use the document.create element to create the paragraph, and then we set the text content, and then we append the paragraph to the fragment, so not to the DOM itself yet. And that's done 10,000 times before we ever append to an element that's part of the DOM itself, and that's the main element here. So let's see how long it takes to create 10,000 paragraphs now as we go back to the browser. And I'll go ahead and refresh, and I click Fragment, 53 milliseconds. Much, much, much faster. I can't emphasize how much faster it is than using inner HTML. So especially when you're iterating, not when you're just creating one element, I understand that inner HTML can be tempting to use, but especially when you're iterating through JSON data, some data you got from a REST API, and you have to create uh, several functions, or not functions, but elements, and maybe not 10,000 elements, but you noticed even 500 elements with inner HTML took a long time where we created 10,000 elements with our create element approach and using a document fragment, and it was much, much faster. So that is the first reason that I choose not to use inner HTML. Now let's move on to the second reason. 
Okay, the second reason I don't like to use inner HTML is because it opens up security issues. It's the possibility of cross-site scripting. So you can see I've got another HTML file. I just named it XSS, which stands for cross-site scripting. Once again, not much on the page. We've got an H1 and a form here with an input, a text input, and a submission button. So once we go over to the JavaScript file for this, you can see I've once again got the add event listener for DOM content loaded that calls init app. And now inside of this, we listen for the form submit event and we process user input. So let's look at what process user input does. It gets the raw data from that user input, the text input, and then it grabs the H1 and it sets the inner HTML with the raw data. Now let's look at why that might be a problem. I'll go back to the browser and we'll pop that up. Now here is our XSS HTML and let's just check out this input. So if I type my name and then click submit, it changes the H1 to my name, that's fine. But what if a user puts in something like this because this does allow elements to be entered. So here we have an image element, an HTML element. We set the source to X, which should create an error. So here's an on error that launches an alert. Let's see if this JavaScript works once we submit it and set it to the H1. Yes, we got an error and we launched an alert window. So just a simulation of a cross-site scripting attack. You want to be able to avoid that. Now, if we quickly go back to Visual Studio Code, let's find a way to change that. Now, I featured a function previously in a 10 handy functions video. I believe it was 10 time-saving functions that I use repeatedly in different projects, and one of those is sanitize input. So let's look at this where it accepts an input value, it creates a div with document create element, then it sets the text content of the div, not the inner HTML, to the input value. And then it returns the inner HTML of the div. Now that would essentially turn that input into text and then of course transfer the value as inner HTML. That could work, so let's go ahead and try that out. Now we'll do that once again we have the raw data and after we get the raw data, let's call the next variable here clean data, set this equal to sanitize input, pass in the raw data, and now down here instead of setting the inner HTML to the raw data, we'll set it to the clean data and save. Now let's go back to the browser and see if that works for us. So once again, I type Dave, hit enter, it works just fine. Now let's try pasting in our attack, press submit, and it turned it into text, no more pop-up, and that's what we need, is just sanitized input, so a cross-site scripting attack wouldn't work. Now this is not the only way to solve that problem. You could use a regex, or use some other encoding, there's various ways to solve that problem, but this is one, and if you're interested in those other nine handy functions, go ahead and check out that 10 time-saving functions tutorial that I'll link to in the description below and above right now. So the big two reasons that I don't want to use inner HTML are performance and security. Remember to increase performance, use document.createElement and then attach those elements to a document fragment that can be attached to the DOM when everything is ready and that creates only one repaint and one reflow and none of the reparsing that slows down the inner HTML. And then remember to sanitize the input with a regex encoding or a function like I've created, sanitize input here, that will essentially defeat a cross-site scripting attack. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you, and thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.